Good morning, everybody, and uh, a warm welcome to this uh, webcast with Quenchfish, uh, which I have the honor of hosting. Um, the uh, company has just uh, this morning uh, published its uh, full year report for 2021. And here to talk about the, the report is uh, Joachim Samuelsson, CEO, and Joachim Niedemark, who is CEO of Crunchfish Gesture Interaction. Uh, so I will uh, discuss with both of them on the report. And uh, my name, uh, who is uh, the moderator today, is Alf Rippler. I work at uh, Westerhamland Corporate Finance. Um, I will talk to both of them. I have some questions prepared, but uh, you can also ask questions. There's a chat function in the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can uh, read your, uh, write your questions there and we will put them forward to the company. Uh, as you may have heard from the beginning, this session is being recorded and the recording is later to be found on Crunchfish homepage and on Vestra Harmon and Corporate Finance uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, so with that, I, um, I want to uh, say good morning to you, Joachim and Joachim. Thank you, good morning. Nice to see you. Now, I want to start off with um, uh, the press release that you released uh, yesterday um, uh, afternoon and, and uh, repeated in the, the, the um, report this morning uh, that you have decided to take a write on on Blip, but you write uh, that uh, holding down to zero. Now, what's, um, what has brought about this, um, this decision? Well, uh, yeah, Blip, Blip it was something we developed in 2019. It's uh, what I yeah, I described that in our Q3 report. It's our second generation. It's an interaction uh, thing that uh, Blipit provides um, sort of the interface between a mobile phone and a PC, which typically is a cash register um, uh, in, in, a, in a shop, really. And um, we, we did set that, that up uh, as a company together with Clearon. Uh, and uh, in the Blipit board, we, we have decided that it, it doesn't make sense to have dedicated resources as we've had it. Uh, that that's was decided with the Blipit board. And uh, that, that means that we had our the auditor in our board meeting yesterday discussing what, what, what that means for, uh, for our uh, shareholding in Blipit. And, and we thought that um, we can't really then provide uh, a, a strong sort of forecast because we are not going to work on it specifically. Uh, it's very, it's still a very good product, but it's an integral part, as we see it, a part of digital cash. But we, the, the auditor recommended us that then it's better that we actually take a write down. Uh, so we, we had prepared actually two scenarios, one where we didn't do one and one where we, we, we were uh, doing a write down and then we had, a, we had to do a press release on it. So, uh, but the auditor recommended us, to, let, let's do that. Uh, let's take that write down. And, and that's what we did. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of a conservative view, but uh, I think it makes sense because we won't have specific resources dedicated to blip it uh, as, as we, ha we, we had sort of before. Uh, and, and then it's, uh, it's better actually to just do a write down, write down of it. But the product works and it's, uh, it's still there. So if any opportunity comes up and, and it, I think the, it will come around, uh, if digital cash is selling and someone wants an interface with digital cash, uh, with a cash register, I think it's a very vital product, but uh, it, it is a peripheral thing to the overall architecture of digital cash right mm. now. Mm. And, and so that means that in the short run, you won't have active um, sales resources trying to, to distribute the product. Okay. Nope. Good. Um, you have talked about in, uh, in the report this morning that, uh, that uh, one of the biggest achievements of 2021 was that you moved from products to platforms. Could you, um, could you explain why this is so important for Crunchfish? Well, we, we, we are countries, we, we are active in two extremely dynamic industries. Uh, we're, we're active in um, digital payments and we're active in computer vision. Uh, two industries that is moving really, really fast. And, then, and, and we believe that to be successful, you need to be extremely uh, on your toes. You have to be fast and you have to be very, very, very flexible. Uh, and we, I think we pride ourselves that we have been that in both those areas of uh, digital cash as well as gesture, we are now into our fifth generation of product development. Um, and, and this fifth generation has become platforms. Uh, and that is digital cash platform and is the country skeleton platform uh, in the gesture side. And it's, um, that itself provides extreme flexibility. Before it's been us in a way, in our development that has been very agile and we've always been responsive. But with a platform, 
you you have such a more broad opportunity of what you can do with a platform when you have a product you you have sort of zoomed it in like blip it as a product it is for one use case only that that's what it is and likewise digital cash offline if i if i say at the digital cash you know it was that you don't have internet connectivity uh, as a user and and we solved for that now with a platform we have you know digital cash online uh, which means that the core banking could be down. We still have digital cash offline, so you could be offline. And we're adding this layer here that we are developing right now, which is for, for cars and wearables. And, and all of a sudden, we have a much broader um, opportunity to address customer needs uh, than what we had before. So moving from products to platforms <laughs> provides much more responsiveness to what comes up for us. And, and so we, we, I think we will still be very responsive doing things development-wise but we have also a platform for being extremely uh, responsive and and I, I've talked a lot about that how important that is for digital cash and I maybe you Joachim uh, if I play in you, you, you if you could talk about you know moving from XR skeleton as a product to the uh, the crunchy skeleton platform what 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 does that mean for gesture you you, you answer that better than I do yeah sure so um, yeah XR skeleton is um sort of our, uh, I would like to call it our flagship product. And um, we, we launched that uh, almost one year ago, but what has happened uh, during uh, during the development and now over, over last year is that we have got all the different um, uh, parts in the, the whole process of developing this kind of software in place. So uh, what, what we have is, uh, uh, our in-house design neural networks. We have our in-house design tools for annotation. Uh, we, we create our own data, both real data and synthetic data. And all of this sort of creates this, this platform and this opportunity to, um, to continue to build sort of new products and, and uh, uh, functions into the, the XR skeleton. So exoskeleton per se is targeting the um, uh, the augmented and virtual reality uh, products. But uh, what we have achieved here during last year, thanks to this platform, is to, to create a number of sort of new solutions and other solutions. So, for instance, we, we, we have not only sort of hand tracking and detection uh, with, with a full skeleton of these 21 points that we have mentioned in, in the report, we have also added and like body skeleton and combinations on on of hand and body skeleton we have added more uh, more um, uh, camera sensors to it so rgb has been one but we have also now uh, the stereo setup of of sensors we have the uh, the infrared sensors and so on and and all of this again open up for for even further development and and fast development as well here moving forward which uh, which is a huge benefit Mm. Thanks. Um, I want to get back to digital cash. Um, you have um, you have uh, shown very uh, in various um, uh, versions of how uh, digital cash can uh, deliver benefit to pay payment services. But have it has it ever occurred to you that uh, Crunchbase could uh, develop a payment service of uh, of your own? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It has occurred to us, Alf, uh, and that we can do that. And I think we can do it now. Uh, we can do it now when we have a digital cash platform because we it, it has a back end, you know, digital cash online, and it has sort of a, a front end where you can have a balance and um, uh, in the front end, and we can even have it on cards as we have been discussing. But if we do that, we will be competing uh, with, um, with, you know, in, in many markets. It takes Sweden that people and people here I, I think are very aware of. Uh, you know, Swiss Swi Swi is such a strong brand. Um, and, and even if we could then come up with a, a service which has some, I think, benefits over Swish, but the happy case that Swish is sort of working for, for an online payment service, I, I think it, it's sort of a household brand now. So why would we want to go and compete with Swish? Instead, what we have done, which is our, a kind of a unique thing, is that instead of becoming our own service, we want to complement this is what we talk about with our digital cash benefits, because we could make we can make Swish better. Uh, and then likewise, we can make any payment service in the world better. And, and what's interesting with it is that banks who are sort of a, the backbone of all sort of uh, digital payments, really, that, that this is where the, the money sits, really, they service many payment services. And, and we can now go and sell our 
additional benefits, digital cash benefits to banks because they want to improve on all their rails. Uh, you know, this could be instant rails, it could be card rails, it could be crypto rails, it could be CBDC, it could be anything. They want to do that. So all of a sudden, instead of doing our own service, which would mean that we're going sort of, I don't know, Alf, if you're familiar with Red Sea and Blue, Blue Ocean sort of strategy, we are in, we're swimming in the Blue Ocean by doing it this way, because we really don't have much competition on what we do. In, in parts, we may have it, but not really. Instead of, if we do our own, we will go straight into the Red Sea with cutthroat competition. And it's so much more fun. You know, we are, we are a bit of a, you know, the, the, the fish is swimming in the blue ocean. And uh, I, I tend to keep it uh, there as long as I can, because that's just, uh, it, it's uh, less competitive and it's, uh, it, the scalability is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, now, you have uh, also highlighted that uh, digital cash online will help to accelerate uh, your overall market, uh, marketing uh, rollout in digital cash. Could you explain how that's, uh, that's expected to work? Well, yeah, it, it's back in a way to banks again. When, when we only had digital cash offline as a product, it wasn't really a suitable product for banks. Um, because a bank, um, well, if, if I start with, uh, I take a step back. A digital cash offline product is really suitable for a payment service like Swish could have it because they have then uh, they have they you have it Swish on a uh, the payer side and they have also uh, an endpoint uh, where the receiver sits that also links to Swish and we can work with Swish and put it in their back end. So it's, it's a digital cash offline. If we only have that, it's it's sort of we sort of have to go to rather the payment services. With digital cash online as well, that we complement with, it's, it becomes quite natural to us to actually go to banks uh, because the banks could just put in digital cash online as the uh, touch point between their core banking system where you all have your transactional account. They will provide a digital cash online sort of, it's not really a mirroring, but, but you can reserve out money. Either banks does it automatically in the background for you, or you can, you can decide on it yourself that you put some money aside that you can use for digital cash online. But we hang the entire structure underneath that uh, with offline and, and, and for cars and wearables. But the beauty of what we have now is that we can, we can just go to one counterparty. You know, we, we're talking to huge banks in India at the moment, and we are, we are far in those discussions. And, and they, they don't have to talk to the payment service. They don't have to talk to Visa, MasterCard, or, or MPCI who deliver UPI uh, for improving these payment services. The banks can do it themselves. So we have one party we talk to, and we can just roll it out. That's an enormous advantage instead of having to, like in Swish case, if we're back to Sweden, yeah, we can do it with Swish, they like it, but we still have to then go to all their member banks and see, you know, how do you feel about this? Now we can just go straight to the banks, one party, deliver online, and then start improving uh, with our benefits on all their payment services. So rollout-wise, it's, it's such a fantastic sort of... Uh, uh, less complicated sale. Uh, and, and we feel that when we talk to uh, sort of the banks that we are now are talking to, that they, they see the benefits and they like it. And uh, yeah, we're getting closer every day to um, this announcement that everybody's waiting for that, wow, we're going to go, go live with digital cash. Mm. And uh, that brings me to um, uh, the business model or the, how you're going to monetize on it uh, from Crunchfish side. Uh, you have, you have uh, explained in the past, you explained... Uh, that uh, the offline solution is uh, based on um, on a prescription service where you have these um, uh, these uh, root certificates um, and and you expect to have recurring payments for for keeping those uh, those permits or licenses uh, active. Um, how about the online side? How is that uh, supposed to work? Well, it, it will actually be a combination, and we are we are we are already now um, verifying this business model with the banks, and and they are telling us in a way, guiding us what they want, and 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 we like what they want uh, because it's it's sort of a little bit how they would pay for uh, payment services coming from switches, and the way that it, that's typically set up is is that you sign a multi-year contract, it could be three to five years. I think we would probably I think five would probably be a bit much uh, for us to ask for because we are sort of new. But one is too short for the banks as well, because it will take some time. But three years would probably be uh, appropriate. And they will pay a license fee for three years. And what that includes? Well, they want us to take full responsibility for first line support. That would be on-prem, uh, on-premise at the bank, 
our people at the bank second line support in the same time zone probably will be india where we have a national sort of um, second line support and then there will be third line support and that will be us in sweden but they want maintenance uh, sort of upgrades for if we, we come with that they want um, customization here initially uh, and they want that that whole package they want that to be sort of like a license fee they like it also and that's customary that we would include maybe say one million transactions is included in that license fee that they pay for. Uh, so that they will pay for. But over and above a million transactions, or it could be 10 million transactions, I don't know. But, but there will be some sort of fee that they we charge them for a three-year contract. Maybe, we, I don't know, it might be that we split it up that we charge, uh, or at least we will account for it uh, a third every year. Uh, I don't know, cash flow wise, if they will pay straight up for three years, maybe we'll have a, a third at a time. But any, any additional transaction that we will do, they will pay per, transi- per, per transaction. So anything that hits digital cash online will be sort of paid separately uh, over and above that, whatever they, they signed up for in their license fee. And, and, and very much the same model, if they, they start having then offline payments as well, it will be the same sort of team that does sort of support and we, we will have customization and there will be a one lump sum a license fee uh, which allows them then for a couple of years then to have our or three years then to have our services but for offline as you said alf we, we add similar as the card service we, we, we will we will charge something i think in your model you're thinking that we could probably charge 50 krona per year that's, that's mm. in your analysis that we went through at the webinar and I think that's probably right. Uh, and the bank might then, they might charge 100. So the bank might just make just as much money as we do, charging their customers subscription-based per year. But they will, they will probably buy you know, a, a lump sum of us of, of uh, subscribers, active mm-hmm. subscribers, and then they pay extra for every single one that we do. And I, 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 one thing that I think is kind of interesting, you, I think your model you had in the webinar, when we, your equity analysis of it, you had 50 million users. Some of the banks we are talking to right now, they have, you know, they have two, 300 million users. So what you have as our full, full capacity, 2030, we can have it with a first customer, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see that. Is there any, um, do you know of any reference point? I mean, uh, if, I'm, if I'm going to sit down and trying to calculate how much money you will make from uh, a customer who pays for, let's say, 10, uh, 10, million, uh, 10 million transactions uh, in a year. Um, I mean, well, how, I think how, the reference, how... yeah, I know. Uh, the reference point is the switching companies. And uh, uh, we, we have got guidance because we are talking to switching companies as, because right now what we want to do, you know, we are, we're talking to the banks, some of the key banks that we want to have as our customers. When we get them, w- w- what I want to do is not ourselves go to every single bank in India and the world, mm-hmm. but we want to go one step back to talk to maybe switching companies. Uh, they could be networks like Visa, MasterCard, China Union Pay. It, you know, people who sell into banks, those are the ones that I want as my partners because they have already salespeople addressing the banks. And, and I think the model of the switching companies, this is the mind gate in, in India, ACI Worldwide, uh, FIS, uh, Finastra, the, the way they go and charge for their kind of services, Tieto Every uh, is sort of the one we have here in the Nordic, the way they work and the way they charge the banks which is very similar to what I just described, that is the model. And, and there we can get some guidance of what do they charge for routing sort of the, uh, uh, the money between your account and the payment rails, e- even incoming or outgoing. And, and that's, that's basically the model that we mimic on. So digital cash online is mimic on the switching companies, uh, which the banks are very familiar with. And digital cash offline is mimic on the card services, uh, how, how that is uh, charged for. And so I, I think we, we are going for standard models. The banks like that. They are used to it and uh, they see no problem in that. Hmm, I see. Um, uh, can you just uh, briefly sum up how the reception in the market has been so far for digital cash and, and uh, where would you expect to get your first order from? Well, we, if, if I take a sort of a little bit of a, you know, go, go back in time, we launched digital cash offline July last year. Digital Cash Offline as a product was launched in July. And, and this is where we are using our partner Viki uh, from Singapore uh, to, to sort of have that secure, secure environment. And um, I really recommend the uh, webinar tomorrow where uh, the global head of sales uh, for Viki is talking about their components and, and how we work with them in Southeast Asia. 
but we we felt uh, as that this product is sort of a little bit slow to sell into the market given that we couldn't go to banks we had to go to payment services and we concentrated on the ones that were like a closed loop system we have those coming now and we, we're working with them but it's going a bit too slow to for my taste so that's why we we we, we came in the q3 report in november here and, and said that we we need to rethink and we came with a platform digital cash online as well now with that which we said was available in december which is not you know we, we're just talking about eight weeks ago the reception has been fantastic uh, and, and 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 because the bank we solve real life problems strategic real life problems for the banks you know if we take sweden the, our financial regulators are telling the banks you need to stabilize swish well i don't know if they have a plan really how to do that but we i think we are the solution in india the volumes are so you know big right now they're doing five billion transactions per month on UPI and they're planning for a billion a day so 30 that's what I, they their core banking won't cope they need a design change I think we are that change so that, that that's the cool thing here really and, and I the banks uh, yeah they they like what they hear uh, and um, that's the exciting thing here because I am we have the online transaction base and it's huge volumes just in India. And then you hang uh, sort of the subscription model with the digital cash offline underneath it. So I'm super psyched that this will be uh, so fun. But I think what the market has to understand is that we, we're talking to huge organizations. Some of the banks we're talking to have more market cap than all the Swedish banks together. Uh, it doesn't move sort of for eight weeks from a launch of a product to uh, to that they you know we have gone through all the all the sort of layers that we have to go through. But but I, we are at the top level talking to those banks and they are excited. Uh, but then so things are coming. I, it's not it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and at the same time, as I said, we are talking to the the ones who sell into banks and they're excited as well because they will have with digital cash an additional thing to sell into the banks uh, that strengthen their offering to the banks so we, we we can scale very quickly if we just get this going and it's uh every day we get one day day closer we're, we're not taking we're not going backwards we're going forward all the time great to hear uh I want to move uh, on to gesture now. Uh, I just want to uh, remind everybody in the audience that you can ask questions as well. There's a chat function in the bottom of your screen. Uh, uh, if you um, if you write a question there, I will read them out and uh, and we can hear what uh, Niedermark or Samuelson has to say about the issues. Um, but I want to get back to um, to uh, to gesture, as I said, and uh, you you touched upon it before in the previous question, uh, Joachim Niedermark. But uh, you know, in, in 2021, you made some big steps forward. Um, could you could you just elaborate a little bit more on what, uh, uh, why it is so important for your business that uh, the developments that you made with the skeleton platform? Yeah, so uh, it it creates the uh, the flexibility and the the, the way to be agile and um, and uh, versatile in in this business. So, in order for us to to grow. Uh, both both quickly within sort of um, new new product and, and business areas, new use cases. Uh, it's also about uh, strengthening the uh, the current uh, use cases that uh, we already had. So um, uh, the the stereo is is one example of that. Where we have in our our previous solution, we had uh, a, a solution or an XR skeleton for RGB. Now we have uh, extended that to to also support stereo, which gives sort of both the the possibility to have sort of the the exact depth information of uh, of the hand, but also it is what what we will believe will be required when we enter into, uh, for instance, consumer AR products. So, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to summarize, uh, flexibility and uh, open up possibilities for for our business basically and just for the idiom, idiots among us uh when you say stereo it's uh it's the idea that you have two cameras and you overlay the two images on top of each other right yeah exactly so um uh, you can compare it to uh to the human eyes so you have two eyes and they are slightly separated mm -hmm. and that is because it gives you sort of this uh 3d information if you like uh, mm -hmm. and 
uh, that is what uh, what is needed. That information is needed to uh, to fully get the immersiveness in um, in augmented reality. Mm -hmm, I see. Uh, and also, you uh, have um, you have uh, talked about uh, this uh, proof of concept project that you have with an automotive partner, uh, and it sounds uh, it sounds interesting. Uh, um, what has the, uh, what was developed in this project, and and uh, how do, does it, you think uh, it will lead to more business opportunities in the future? Yeah, so we are in in general very excited um, of the uh, automotive uh, opportunities as such, and this. Uh, this proof of concept is uh, sort of a, a very important step towards uh, that business sector. Uh, what we have built in this proof of concept is a, a, a demo uh, that uh, shows sort of the capabilities of, of a solution, including both our uh, skeleton technology, but also uh, a sort of technology from, from our partner. And uh, basically what, what we meet with this uh, concept is uh, the, the requirements from the automotive industry on uh, what is called uh, uh, P, uh, sorry, DMS and, and OMS. So it's driver monitoring system and uh, occupant monitoring system. So basically uh, there will be requirements on car manufacturers to support this kind of uh, uh, ways of uh, uh, having for safety reason uh, surveillance in a way of uh, of the, uh, the driver and the passenger uh, maybe not surveillance per se but uh, keeping track of for instance uh, does the driver have his hands or her hands on the steering wheel is there a mobile phone in the hand are there uh, you know uh, dogs in the car and all of these different parts uh, gives you a view of the how safe this vehicle is at the moment. And you can then have uh, warning signals and so on based on that. Mm. So, um, so, so that is basically what, what we have achieved so far. And is that supposed to, um, to work using one camera or several cameras within the car? Do you have gone so far so you can say things like that? Yeah, probably it will be, uh, be several cameras in, uh, in cars, especially to be able to keep track on, on the backseat passenger, passengers fully as well. But uh, initially we're talking about the camera in the rear mirror uh, in order to, to uh, get the information about the, uh, the front seat passenger and uh, driver. Mm, okay, thanks. Uh, and you just recently received your 12th patent within um, Gesture. Um, what, uh, what makes this patent uh, more interesting than, than the others? Yeah, so so we are excited about this patent because it's uh, right down the alley of augmented uh, reality and uh, virtual reality. So, um, in in essence, what this patent protects is the uh, the ability to um, to uh, to scramble or or change the order of, for instance, numbers or uh, or letters in uh, uh, in a keyboard when you want to type. A, a pin code or a password. So imagine that you have this uh, augmented reality glasses on, then you have like a virtual screen with a, uh, a pin code. And if you, if you have the numbers arranged in the same way as, uh, yeah, you know, usually is the case, uh, people uh, around you will probably see the pattern how you type these numbers. But uh, in order to, um, to, uh, to solve that problem, you can rearrange the numbers. You can still have the same pin code, but you can rearrange the numbers and then you will be uh, protected from, uh, from uh, potential fraud and stuff in, in that context. Mm. So um, that is what this patent is, is all about. Mm, I see. Um... And uh, you have uh, have signed up a pretty big contract with your sister company, Digital Cash. Um, uh, and uh, why is uh, why is uh, your latest patent and uh, and uh, your gesture control interesting for Digital Cash? Uh, I don't know if that well, who uh, you want to answer that between you. Well, I, I, I yeah. can take it, Joachim, because we, oh, yeah. I, um, we, I think me and Patrick here. I know you had to negotiate hard with uh, the very you know tough negotiator, Patrick Lindeberg, CEO from uh, the Digital Cash side. But, but, but it's really, you know, everybody knows what's, what's the drill when you come to a car terminal. Uh, you have to put in a pin 
and you would do that on your phone as well to unlock. And, and, and digital cash, if you think of it, you, you're going to do transactions uh, on your phone. So you need to unlock things. You need to authorize things. Uh, and if, if we move a little bit into the future here, that as Apple say, that uh, uh, augmented reality uh, AR glasses will be sort of the norm, uh, then you will pay from your glasses, obviously. Uh, so th th that would be a lot of transactions like, where you unlock things, uh, the device itself, but, but also then to authorize a payment. And, and we wanted to uh, make sure that uh, that other sister company has the, uh, th that available to us because uh, authenticating a payment with a PIN or something, or any anytime we touch basically our digital cash uh, environment, our trusted application we run there, we, we need to sort of... Uh, sign into that it could be by biometrics but certainly also with the pin so we 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 decided to sort of uh uh you know buy that it we we haven't press released it but we put it in in the report the reason for not press releasing is that it's it's completely um, irrelevant on a on a sort of uh corporate level because it's all will be uh, you know uh what's it called uh it, it will be sort of balanced out because there is one buying and one selling. And so that's why we didn't put it in a press release. But, but Joachim, uh, he writes about it, uh, that there is a sale uh, to digital cash in this, uh, yeah, th that we have done it. And uh, I think it's important uh, because I, I think we, we are making sure that this is um, something which uh, is linking the two business areas. And uh, I think then it's good that digital cash is paying uh, for that uh, that's having that opportunity it's sort of a perpetual license and, and we've charged it similarly as we would if this would be a, a sort of a third party buying it really i think that's what they negotiated joachim and patrick really here mm, okay anything you want to add need mark no i think that was um extensive and uh, very good so uh, yeah we're yeah thanks uh, right, I have received one question from the audience uh, that's on digital cash. So I would just want to have uh, one more question uh, first on on gesture, and that is uh, if you could uh, if you could look into the future, Niedermark, and say uh, what uh, would you expect the business focus for uh, for gesture interaction to be? Yeah, so uh, since um, I would say uh, four or five years, we we have had a full attention on augmented and virtual reality, where where augmented reality Glasses for the the main market, the end users, is sort of the uh, the key for us, and uh, we still have that space for sure. So, uh, uh, and, and that includes also the uh, the virtual reality, and, and we strongly believe in that area. Still, the the volumes are low, but we are we are following it. We have uh, sort of relationships ongoing with uh, with main actors in this space, and. Uh, we see that we are we are well positioned when uh, when uh, sort of these products really hit the market and uh, start to bring volumes and there are a lot of initiatives in this space if you look at what you know facebook and others are sorry meta is doing nowadays in this space uh, there are products uh, sort of they are looking at and, and they have started to launch a few not fully augmented uh, reality maybe but we, we are we are definitely getting there. So so that is what we foresee coming. But then we also have this automotive that uh, we are very excited about, and and I think the difference between sort of the uh, the augmented reality and automotive is that automotive is um, uh, sort of coming with uh, re with regulations on on and requirements on this kind of functionality. So so there is a, a must have for for this industry of uh, of our technology. And uh, that is sort of definitely driving sort of our attention to that market space is something we uh, we drive pretty hard uh, at the moment as well, not the least shown by by this uh, proof of concept lately. Mm, okay, great, thanks. Uh, yes, as I said, I have received one question from the audience. Uh, all of you in the audience, you're very welcome to ask questions and uh, please use the chat function if, if you have something you, you're wondering about. Uh, the, this question is, uh, the market was very enthusiastic in 2021 on the digital cash offline offering, uh, looking at the share price, not least. Uh, now the market is more ca cautious. Uh, Joachim, it seems uh, you are now very excited about the digital cash platform. What do you tell the skeptics who think this year won't be different to last year in terms of progress? Well, yeah, third time lucky. Um, I don't know. Well, no, but, um, you know, we... 
I was excited about Blip It, and it has its had its scope. Uh, people who have been with us for a long time, that's what we had in 2019. I thought that was a great thing. It turned out to be um, sort of, didn't sort of be a big thing. Digital cash offline, uh, I was excited. Uh, and um, uh, you're right. Um, I think a lot of the share price was inflated by uh, people uh, who are buying our shares for uh, issuing turbo warrants. I'll talk about that in our webinar. But... But, but it, certainly, I think there were excitements, and, and we were as well. But then we, we felt it was sort of a bit slow in the market, just like we felt we blip it. But we, now with Digital Cash Platform, uh, why is it different now? Well, first of all, blip it is still there, as I said. Digital Cash Offline is still there, but we have just expanded the scope. Right now, I think the scope is for everything. I think this is a product for every bank, for every payment service, for every central bank. That's what we have now. So now the scope can't really be much larger when it comes to digital payments. That's what we reach now. So it, it, the scope is just fantastically broad. And what's exciting right now, I think, is, is sort of the, the, um, the dialogues that we have now in the markets. Uh, and we are talking to the banks directly. And we don't have to, they don't have to talk to anyone else, really. They don't have to talk to Visa, as I said, if they want to improve their responsiveness for doing sort of um, responding to card payments uh, in that rail. They don't have to talk to Swish, uh, a bank, if they want to. They can do it themselves in order to just stabilize their own operations. That, I think, is, you know, the, the reception we have is sort of uh, very, very promising. And uh, so we are, I guess we are further along. Uh, we still have Blipit. We still have offline. But now we have a whole platform. So if I look at what has happened this year, as I said, we've moved from product to platform. And platforms are much more versatile, much more broader focus. We got patents. Uh, that we didn't have that a year ago. I think that's fantastic as well. Uh, so we, we are seeing patents. Uh, we have sort of have one. Um, yeah, one, one sort of on offline payments and, and another one, which was our original patent that we, with this modification we did, uh, we now have an, um, a positive report on patentability. Uh, that's also great. And, and we are already talking to partners who are selling into banks and they're exciting. They're excited about what we have. So, um, you know, and that, that means that, um, yeah, I think we have, a, we, we have we're, we're simply further along. Um, and, 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 and things are looking good. I'm, um, I am psyched, as, as you can tell. But, but I was psyched with Blipit. I was psyched with Offline as well. But, but I think that is the strength of Crunchfish. And that's why we're using this Darwin that the winner will be the ones who are most responsive to change. We are working in an extremely fast moving industries and you have to be very, very fast, very responsive. We have become, we are that. We have already proven that being in our fifth generation, but also now having platforms means that whatever the bank sort of is asking for, whatever, you know, whatever facets of digital payments they want, we can probably deliver that. Whatever improvement, whatever benefits they need to do, we have that now in our uh, platform offering. Before we were more niche of a product, now we have a much broader. So. I, I, it is a different game. But I, again, I'm not sort of the ones that are looking for it. I don't care really uh, if we are in our share price is 50 or 20 or 70. This is not the levels we're going to be. If we make it here with the potential that we have, you know, we, we're going to leave these areas forever uh, behind us and, and be at completely different areas. So the short term share price, I don't, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not optimizing for that. I'm optimizing for actually you know, taking over the world when it comes to digital payments. This is what we're saying to the banks. We are the future of payments. That's what we have. That makes sense. Um, another question from the audience here. Is there any progress with e-currency or other CBDC providers? Well, yeah. Um, uh, e-currency is actually doing well in Jamaica. They won that. And, and that's actually one of the projects that has come furthest in the world. Uh, and and they're, they're working their way. Uh, they're providing initially here uh, a platform for the Bank of Jamaica to issue uh, sort of digital currency. And, and they are right now in, in, a, in a project of uh, adding more and more banks that come into the ecosystem and they, they, they are trying it out. They, they're going to have what's called a scale up phase uh, where they're adding more banks and then they're also adding more features. Offline is certainly on the table. E-currency doesn't have an offline uh, offering, and we are their partners. But it hasn't really. It, it, they're working their way uh, through the uh, the uh, requirements lists and uh, and adding more and more banks uh, to their sort of service. And and um, at some point we will come in. We are in dialogue with them, but it's been um, 
you know, we, we haven't, uh, we're not pushing because uh, right now I think the project is not yet going for offline. And this is where we're coming in very strongly with the e-currency, uh, you know, and, and we're quite busy anyway, you know, we, with our focus on India. So uh, we, we, we're not, we're not calling them every day, if I say so, because we, we feel that, well, we are here when they need us, uh, you know, we'll, we'll pick up the phone, but we're not, we're not pushing them because I think the market is not there yet for them in their project. But they come far if I look at internationally where people are on CBDC projects. Great, thanks. Um, let's say I just got another question here. In November, you mentioned negotiations with uh, one top payment provider at the proof of concept stage. Is that one still progressing? Progressing, and have you added further late stage discussions? Still mainly, or still mainly one discussion. Well, we have. Um, we, uh, we, there's, a, there's more here. There's more. Here. Also yeah, related. Uh, also related. Do you see further delays in the timeline in terms of commercial agreements, or do you see an acceleration from here? Uh, I see acceleration. As, as that's one of our. If you look at, if you read our report, which I recommend, because I think that's what we always do in the quarterly report uh, to really give you the the best overview picture of where we are, and and all these. That's what you're asking here is is all answered, but. Uh, Digital cash online provides huge acceleration for us. Uh, but the projects that we had in November, which was obviously just digital cash offline because we, we were just coming with online at that point, they're still, go ongo they're still going. Uh, and we are, we are uh, right now in, um, in sort of integration and, and working to get the, the product together. And these are with huge sort of uh, payment services in, in India. And we, are, we have added also one in, in, as we have said already then, in Southeast Asia, uh, um, another, not in India, but another one that we are working with as well. And that's for, that's for mainly focused on the offline. But now with Digital Cash Online, as we have as well, we are, um, we, we are uh, adding it. Uh, yeah, we, we can more easily go to market because we go to banks and then they start with Digital Cash Online and then we start hanging on to that offline. And then, we, yes, as I said, also the cards and wearables. So there is an acceleration. Everything that we had uh, is still there but it's going a little bit slowly with the offline. But, but we, we, it, we, we just have to, it, it just takes time with these things because it's complicated, it's payments and it's security is high and all that. But with online, adding that to the whole mix, um, things are accelerating. And that's, that's sort of one of the chapters that we have in our, in our digital cash section, uh, explaining why that, that is so. But if we go back to the root of this, uh, this question here, it was uh, referred to one particular, uh, negotiation that you had with a proof of concept uh, partner, um, yeah. and uh, whether that is still progressing, and it if you have added is. added more similar, similar. Yeah, we have. Um, we have as I said, uh, yeah, that one is progressing. Uh, it's come quite far, uh, and uh, we are in. Um, I think right now we we're going to present it. Uh, the, the one we, we're working with them, uh, so we will we will be at the final stage in in actually in March. I think it's the 18th of March is where we're talking to their sort of top management about uh, or their sort of product management about this what what we've done. So we we are yeah we are in a late stage sort of a proof of concept uh, type of yeah work, and then it will be roll out uh, during uh, yeah Q3 Q4, and then it's looking good. And we've added a, another one in Southeast Asia as well, as well, that we also had already at the Q3 report. If you read that carefully, you will find that we had reference to that and it's still alive and still kicking and they, they are excited and they, they want to move on as well. But it's, um, it's just, it takes a little bit of time. But, um, you know, um, I, what I'm looking for is acceleration, speed, scalability. Uh, and, and that's what we have added when having a platform now when uh, online on top, uh, which is very important for us. But, but uh, Everything's still there. It's, we haven't lost anything. All right. Um, I think uh, we have an, come close to the end here. I just uh, want to round, up, round off that uh, with uh, saying that uh, we, now we are putting uh, 2021 behind us. So we're looking uh, forward into 2022. Uh, in what sense do you think uh, Crunchfish is a better company uh, in, in 2022 than, uh, than before? Yeah, as I said, uh, main thing, we've gone from products to platform. Um, we have more patents. Yes, your side, I think that was a huge win with the 12th one we got, but also we got our two first ones um, on, the, uh, on the digital cash side, which is very promising for the rest of the portfolio as well. And, um, you know, our, our customers uh, being now banks uh, are excited. It's an easier sell. Uh, and we have, we're talking to 
partners that are selling into bank and they're excited as well. So I, I think it's just, uh, we, we just moved a lot, uh, a huge sort of, and um, you know, I'm, uh, things are looking good. I'm not, I'm not really worried. I, I think it's just, uh, I can understand people who are frustrated that it takes time, but, but come on, I, I'm thinking we, we came up with digital cash online in December. How, how fast do you think it will be talking to these big organizations? I, I think two months is not a long time. Uh, in in this scale of things, but but we're going for the whole world, uh, so just you know hang in there. Um, that's what we do. Uh, yeah. we're quite happy about it. And the, the money is you know we have the money. Uh, we will fill uh, fill up the, our our sort of cash in uh, December with these warrants that we have. So things are absolutely fine in terms of uh, as you have said many times, Alpha, in your reports that the company probably don't need any more money. So I, I think that's fine. We have all that. So now it's just to craft a strategy to conquer the world and that's what we do so it's going to be fun it uh, sounds very exciting it's going to be interesting to to watch you do it uh with that i think we have reached uh, the end of this session so i want to thank you you can someone's on you can need a mark and everybody has been listening um and i hope to see you again uh, after your next quarterly report thanks alf thank you thanks bye-bye